If this is another edition of your favorite program, Health Affair on AIT, and I'm your regular anchor, Ushua Mowa Daniels. You're welcome. On the program, everything about health is our concern. We also focus on issues about women and children with the aim of finding lasting solutions. On this week's edition, we shall be focusing on chemicals used in food preservation and its health implication. Let's take you through our new segment for that. On the 26th of September every year, the World Contraception Day is celebrated. This year's theme, which is Be Safe, Not Sorry, envisions that every pregnancy in the world should be planned. The World Contraception Day is centered on improving awareness of contraception in order to enable young people, most especially women and girls, make informed decisions with their sexual and reproductive health. In almost all societies, there is an increase in sexual activities among young persons, hence the need to empower young people in Nigeria to take charge of their reproductive and sexual health. According to Rosalind Ode, Deputy Team Lead, Delivering Innovation for Self-Care with Society for Family Health, Many Nigerian women and girls still face extreme poverty and many do not know how to maintain their sexual and reproductive health. She noted the need for sustainable media engagement of all stakeholders to address the vulnerabilities revolving around sexual reproductive health challenges faced by women and girls. Out of about almost 400 and 520 million people living with our disease all over the world. Every year, on the average, we lose about 20 million people dying from our disease. And since COVID came, this has increased a lot. The 2021 World Heart Day celebration has provided another opportunity for members of the Nigerian Heart Foundation, Lagos, to admonish Nigerians on the need to imbibe heart-friendly lifestyle with the theme, Use Heart to Connect, the Nigerian Heart Foundation decided to make this year's celebration a unique one by partnering with some Nollywood actors and actresses whom they have selected as Nigerian Heart Foundation ambassadors. The Nollywood industry continues to employ millions of youth and thereby improving the economy of Nigeria. In support of this initiative, Nigerian Heart Foundation has decided to work with the Actors Guild of Nigeria and as by our tradition globally, we have identified 10 Nollywood members this year to work with them and to kick our project going. And uh, the 10 Nollywood stars have been accorded full membership of Nigerian Heart Foundation. And out of the 10 Nollywood stars, three Nollywood members have been nominated as ambassadors of Nigerian Heart Foundation to propagate their advocacy and awareness of, on heart disease. The heart diseases, we've been told, you know, are the highest causes of death, not only in Nigeria, but all over the world. And so as ambassadors, there's a lot of work to be done. World Heart Day is commemorated every 29th of September every year to raise awareness and intervention against cardiovascular diseases. Able to reach the common woman by telling her, be careful, the amount of oil you use to fry that your car, for example. Mm. Mm. Do you understand? This is a better oil to use. This is not a good oil to use, mm. for instance. And then you encourage her to teach her children the right foods to eat. Teach her husband the right times to eat. Encourage her to make sure that they all have adequate sleep. You're beginning to send the message easily, especially when you target women and children. I'll be able to have like movies to be able to reflect this. We'll be able to do like skits to be able to reflect this. And I just think that with all of this in place, we should be able to reach more people. Because the more we say, we know go stop. The more we say, the more people will listen. The theme for this year is use heart to connect. And the meaning of that is that uh, the World Heart Federation, which is the international body responsible for determining the theme, says that we should use art to connect in all ramifications in our environment, both in the home, among the individuals, 
in the uh, in the community among the professionals in the government at all levels and all stakeholders to be able to connect with that message that you can use your heart to be able to improve the ways in which the heart takes care of the body. The risks that we have identified that can affect the heart include unhealthy diet, tobacco, too much sugar. Make sure that your diet does not contain too much salt. Make sure that your diet contains heart-friendly oil. You use heart-friendly oil. There are so many oils available in the market. Make sure you use heart-friendly oil to cook. Ensure that you undertake exercise at least 30 minutes every other day, like about 150 minutes a week has been recommended. And do not sit down for a prolonged time because it has also been known that prolonged sitting down affects the heart. And uh, watch your weight. Do not carry excessive weight. Do not indulge in alcohol as much as possible. And uh, try to avoid stress. The Nigerian Art Foundation is a national charity inaugurated in 1992 with the aim to promote research on cardiovascular diseases, heart health promotion, advocacy and action on heart issues. Nigerian Art Foundation is affiliated to the World Heart Federation in Geneva. That note, the tone was set for today's event, the transfer of authority to Rotarian Kedion Jude Mobosa as the 17th and changemaker president of Rotary Club of Ojudu District 9110. <laughs> While the change maker president has promised to work around the seven areas of focus of Rotary Club International, healthcare may be getting much attention given the poor health indices of Nigerians and the ravaging coronavirus. I'm most honored and humbled to be elected president of the Rotary Club of Ojodu 2021-2022, change maker year. And with the help and support of my board and fellow club members, I will do my best to meet the challenges ahead. Joy from children when they know that they can now access modern toilet facility in their school environment is heartwarming. The look of relief on the faces of community members who attend our annual health fair is long lasting. The hope created in the lives of families when they realize that they can walk into any hospital of their choice and get medical attention without spending a dime, leaves a, last, a lasting positive impression. So, in my principle, so my principle remains that we give, not because we have a lot, but because we know what it is like not to have. And by extension, we know what the implications are of not having in our society. From a close point of view, our focus on development, on youth development, health and well wellness, water and sanitation, as well as education, 
continues to be a pillar of strength. If you go to the maternity ward, you see that um, a lot needs to be done. We can't do that alone, and we can't achieve that just for one year. But what we're going to do this year, we need beds in the wards, and we need to upgrade. We need to put in uh, mosquito nets. So the much we can do this year, we will take. We've been working with the, um, the health center for the past five years. So what we want to do this year, we will do. What we can do this year, we'll do, and then we'll roll over next year. things we'll do, sharing food, visiting the destitute, the less privileged, and the homes of charity. Some other things borrow for our communities. It depends on the immediate needs of the community you reside in. The lingering resident doctor strike also got the attention of the change maker president. Um, not too pleasing that uh, doctors have been on strike. Um, I would just, I would just want to appeal to the government and to the doctors to try and and come to level ground. Think of the masses. Think of the many um, uh, people that cannot afford to get medical care elsewhere, and um, try and get settle whatever misunderstanding or differences they are having and call off the strike. Because it will go a long way helping the, the less privileged and indigent in the, in the society. With the nation's economic challenges being a major concern, an economic expert, Muda Yusuf, spoke extensively on service orientation, governance, and lots more. Trade policy, from tax policy, issues of multiple taxation and all of that. We have challenges with insecurity, we have the COVID pandemic, luckily that is fizzling out gradually. We have some shocks that come from technology and innovation. If you are not very dynamic in your business, if you are caught up with innovation and new technology, the business can actually go into extinction. This is very important. If we do something in truth, and we do it in the spirit of the Rotarian values, this economy will be much better. It was also an evening to honor individuals who have contributed immensely to the growth of the club and humanity. It is presented to Honorable James Abiodu Faneke on this day, the 26th of September 2021. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Rotary Club of Ojudu started in 2002 and got chartered in 2005 with 26 members. The club has grown in leaps and bounds with several projects to its credit. With a brilliant piping engineering specialist, Kedion Imobosa, from Delta State taking over for the next one year, many say the sky is not the limit for the club to make greater impact and change lives for the better. Rotary and Kedion joined the Rotary Club of Ojudu in 2018 and has served in several committees before its emergence as president of the club. <music> Members of the Association of Nigerian Private Medical Practitioners, ANPMP, are calling on the federal government to find a lasting solution to the insecurity crisis confronting the nation. Speaking during the opening ceremony of the 2021 Scientific Conference and Annual General Meeting of the Association in Lagos on Wednesday, 29 September 2021, they noted that beyond the economic challenges affecting their operations, doctors have become targets of bandits and other criminal elements in society. We want to see how we can fashion out a safer environment for medical uh, practice. We are losing a lot of doctors from, uh, you know, the brain drain and so on. Now, coupled with that, even the, uh, the ones that are here are not safe enough because kidnapping, uh, uh, patients being uh, unsatisfied with what the, uh, the doctor is doing and so on and so forth are even depleting more the, uh, the, uh, the, the number of doctors that can attend to patients. And I think it is, it is very, it's high time the, 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 uh, the government will look seriously into how they can make 
the environment even safer for doctors. Very troubling, it's very hard troubling that you find out that ordinary citizens will target doctors. Doctors that are providing health care, that are providing services for the community. And they have a false impression that doctors are rich or doctors have everything. And that is absolute fallacy. In this nation, the doctor is easily targeted. It's an easy target because you provide a public service. It should be a concern to raise the security operations in the country because people are not safe. Patients are being killed in the hospital. Now we just have a recent abduction. It's not because of the personality, but because he's a human being and because he's a citizen of the country. This insecurity is beginning to be too much and we cannot practice in this environment. You want doctors to write reports on cases that they have seen, the doctor will be taken away. The doctor will have to pay ransom to be released. The emotional state of the doctor and their family is subjected to a, a trial. Other issues and focus at the conference include strengthening the health insurance scheme, health referral system in Lagos State, and lots more. Here we are reviewing the status and um, achievement with Nigeria Health Insurance so far. And uh, we have discovered that 76.6% of the healthcare expenditure in this country is out of pocket payment. And that is a great challenge to individuals and families. And we're also looking at universal health coverage. How do we accelerate? How do we get to that level? So we're looking at the former sector. We're also looking at uh, the informal sector of health insurance. And we have discovered that so far, the percentage coverage is even less than 5% nationally. And at the state level, we see the state support health insurance scheme as being part of health insurance under one roof. And we're looking at it that we look, the level at which we are going now, if capitation and fee for service we're doing, if they are not revealed to meet the time value of money, subscribers who are the health care providers may not be interested in coming to participate in health insurance. We also look at the fact that there is need for population in health insurance to make money. Therefore, what that means is that there must be and there should be compulsory health insurance subscription. If health insurance is made mandatory for all citizens in the country, one of the advantages will be that the pool will be larger, the funds will be larger, and then you can take more of these non-communicable diseases. And that's where we are planning to go. For now, what we do is that initially for people with diabetes and people with um, uh, 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 cardiac uh, cardiovascular diseases, we give chemotherapy. Uh, the first six chemotherapy is free. And then dialysis also, the first six dialysis is on the health insurance. After that, there's a core insurance that needs to be joined between the patient and the HMOs. If you're a single person in Lagos, just do a loan, do your hustle in Lagos, working, it's, uh, premium is 8,500. So single person above 18, it's 8,500 for that particular person. But if you are married and you have children, for a, for a family it's 40,000. That's husband, wife, and four ch maximum four children is 40,000. Now what we've done is that we know that there are people that have multiple wives and more than four children. So there's actually a provision for additional, additional children and additional wives. Of course, there's provision for additional premium to accommodate these additional family members. So also looking at referral system. Um, uh, how effective is it, it is, and um, the structures are they being followed? A situation where the tertiary institutions are uh, overburdened with uh, primary care, they will not be able to really uh, give their best in terms of the specialist care uh, which ordinarily they should handle. So everything is modeled up. Someone having a headache is found themselves in teaching hospital. And then uh, someone that now has a serious issue with the brain may not even be attended to because of too much crash. So the structure is poor. The Association of Nigerian Private Medical Practitioners, ANPMP, is the umbrella organization for all medical and dental doctors in private practice, either as owners or employees. Formed in 1921 under the name Association of General Medical Practitioners of Nigeria, 
The name was later changed to address the concerns of members who are specialists. Sexual and gender-based violence for these activists has become the most prevalent form of human rights abuse and mostly underreported due to associated stigmatization. Also worrisome is the rate at which children from ages 0 to 15 have become more vulnerable, a situation that calls for more enlightenment and capacity building for self-defense. The two-day training for young leaders, young leaders um, to be able to two things particularly catch them young at this very early stage and build their capacities to be able to first and foremost understand basic human rights violations and also be able to respond to these human rights violations within their communities, within the spaces they occupy when these issues arise. Work with young people, young women specifically, to talk to them about uh, leadership, uh, leadership concepts, looking at leadership from a participatory, horizontal and democratic uh, principles uh, and applying it to how they will address sexual and gender-based violence in the society. If you are a leader and you don't know the issues, then you, what will you be able to report? We also, you know, to give them that uh, capacity to understand that within the community that there are roles they can play in terms of how to report, reporting pathways, what is expected of them and all that. So it's actually taking responsibility and living up to expectations. And then for them to also build their capacity, knowing what to do when things happen like that. And then for, the, for them to also mentor others. Because as a leader, you are supposed to be able to build the capacity of your followers to understand what you are doing. With the persistent resident doctor strike also impacting negatively on abused victims who need medical services, the gender rights advocates urged government to provide a conducive environment for doctors to operate. Government is not helping matters. You don't, I'm a medical person, you don't put people into the war front without equipping them with guns. It's, so what, what are the doctors uh, complaining about? They need good condition of service. I think they should be listened to. It's just like what happened when the police went on, you know, police go on strike, the military go on strike. What will happen to insecurity? You know, things like that, even with them not, not being on strike, we see what is, what is going on. So I think the governments, both local and states, should contribute so come together. We don't even have enough doctors. We don't have enough medical officers to care for the population that we have. And the majority of them are going outside the country. And the government is saying, no, if you like, you can go. Don't do that. You know? Of course, you don't blame them. When they have money, the government people, they will, they will you know, go to, you know, outside the country to go and get. How many people will have that, you know, resources? The Lagos State Health Service Commission has employed over 400 health workers to fill existing vacancies in state-owned secondary health facilities between the last quarter of 2020 and the second quarter of 2021. The chairman Lagos State Health Commission, Dr. Atinuke Onaiga, disclosed this after reviewing the report of the ongoing recruitment exercise currently being coordinated by the Health Service Commission. She said that the engagement of the healthcare workers is part of the current administration's strategy to improve human resources for health towards the provision of qualitative healthcare delivery in Lagos State. The chairman further stated that the recruitment of the health workers was conducted subsequent to the approval of the governor and in line with the exit replacement and human resource policy of the state government. The Nigerian government has established a National Blood Service Commission, NBSC. The commission replaces the National Blood Transfusion Service, which was formerly under the Ministry of Health. A statement signed by the head media and publicity of the new commission, Abdullahi Haruna, says the commission has the mandate to coordinate, regulate, and ensure the provision of safe and quality blood transfusion services in the country. The establishment of the commission is coming on the heels of the recent passage into law of the National Blood Service Commission Bill by the National Assembly. 
the National Coordinator of the National Blood Transfusion Service, Omale Joseph, has been appointed Acting Director General of the National Blood Transfusion Commission. National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, has raised alarm over the alleged use of petrol and kerosene tankers to convey granite and vegetable oil in some parts of the country. The Director General, Mojisola Adeyeye, who made this known, condemned the act and urged Nigerians to take necessary safety precautions and report such evil activities to the nearest NAVDAC office or law enforcement agency. She stressed the need for Nigerians to remain vigilant and appealed to owners of petrol or kerosene tankers to ensure that their drivers are not found wanting over this evil trend. The preservation of food items like grains, beans, and ripening of fruits with chemicals has been identified by the National Agency for Foods, Drug and Nutrition and Control, NAVDAC, as a major cause of increasing disease burden, especially non-communicable diseases like cancer, kidney failure, and lots more. I spoke with some experts about the issue. Please take a listen. We, we, we found out over time and there's been this outcry from a lot of our citizens that there's been an abuse of so many areas. Take, for example, um, food commodities, food, you know, NAVDAC regulates food. We, 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 we found out that a lot of people are misusing chemicals to preserve most of our foods. We find out that not only do they misuse them, some of them apply them wrongly. I'll give you some examples. Um, take, for example, in beans, you know, pesticides, for example, we find out a lot of them when they, um, you, you go to buy beans, for example, you see that they apply, you know, chemicals directly on this, um, you know, on this produce. And at the end of the day, it's like those things are, they really endanger their life. And so that is one area when we're talking about food. So we see a lot of cases like that. We see people using dyes to make their, um, uh, palm oil look bright, nice, yellowish, and all that. And these things sometimes they contain dyes that are carcinogenic in nature. And so we have so many of our products like that. You know, you cannot even have confidence in the oil you buy. Even the meat, even the meat that you buy in the market, you find out that your meat is also we use um, some kind of preservative. You know, they use chemicals on it so that you would not have decay of that meat. So even the meat you're taking, the fish you're taking, the chicken you're taking, you cannot even guarantee what is happening. Because people are not, people do not, you know, they don't feel, they don't understand that they are endangering the lives of our citizens. That is one area. Then you have also another area where you're talking about even drugs itself. A lot of people, a lot of people tend to buy their drugs from patent med medicine stores. Usually med med patent medicine stores, they sell more of over-the-counter paracetamol, very simple drugs. But we found out that all these very serious drugs that can affect, you know what I mean, like that, are, that um, are used for very serious conditions. People just, yes, they just abuse them. And so before you know it, you begin to have developed resistance against whatever organism maybe you're trying to fight, if it's an infection that you have. And then even in this era of COVID, you see that when people have COVID, COVID is not a death sentence. COVID is, is um, some, it, it's, it's in, a, in a class that is very equivalent to cold, to make it very easy for people to understand. And instead of trying to go to your doctor to find out, first of all, to test if you have it, so that you can use the right drugs for it, people prefer to be in denial 
you know, and they don't, they just use different things. They just say, you know, antibiotics will do this. Antibiotics will take care of the COVID, you know, the virus. You know, um, let's take, um, you know, different medications, even concussion and all that. People just take different things. So we realize that there's so much abuse, even this, even this period of COVID, that people just take anything. And they don't know that they are destroying their organs. People just buying things from buses, buying anywhere they see drugs, without even imagining if this drug is really safe for use and or if it is effective. And of course, on that, because like say, if you're using all these very um, ethical products, that is when I talk about product, ethical products, I'm talking about products that are therapeutic in nature, that if you do not use them you know, properly, of course, it could even lead to death. That people don't go to the right places. They don't go to the doctors to get their prescriptions. They just self-medicate. So we have cases like that. And then you have even, like I mentioned, meat, for example. You know, there's a link between meat, man, environment. Um, people just consume, you know, because we all go to the market. And so now we have just realized that we're even having some kind of antimicrobial resistance. People are beginning to, because it, sometimes you think that your problem is just from the drug you take, from the meat you consume. Because most of that meat, like I said, they contain things in them that should not be there. And of course, it will affect you. So we have a lot of antimicrobial resistance issues. We have the drug abuse issues. We have, of course, the misuse of um, chemicals. Traders generally, those who are selling fruits, use chemicals to ripen their fruits, fruits like bananas, plantain, you find out that they use calcium carbide, which is a chemical that is supposed to be used by welders to weld uh, metals. You find out because it, it mimics the natural ripening chemical in fruits, they now add it to the fruit just to get it quickly to the market. They don't want to allow it to ripen the natural one. You find that People buy those foods, like you can be in your vehicle in a traffic and you see somebody hawking banana, you just buy your banana, you open it and you start eating without knowing some of those chemicals get into your body. And those chemicals have been found to have bad effect, deleterious effect on our kidney, on our liver, even causing various problems, even some kinds of cancers have been, it has been implicated. So we are trying to educate people to disease from using chemicals to ripen the food. It's not safe when you now plug those foods when they are not ripe and you now apply chemicals. Even our parents had natural way of ripening. You put them in bag, you try to create heat around the, the, the fruit and it ripens naturally. But because they want it to get to market within two or three days, they use chemicals. When you find, let's say for instance, you want to buy uh, something like banana or plantain and you see that the fruit, fruit is very yellow but the stalk is still green. You have to be wary of such things. And then you see some of your fruit is so smooth. That normal brown mottled colors that you see on naturally ripened fruit, you don't see it. You see it so smooth and everything. You have to suspect that maybe such fruit has been ripened with chemical. And another advice I want to give people, try as much as possible to wash your fruits. Put them under running water. Use soap to wash the fruit very well before you eat it. Don't be too much in a hurry to eat your fruit, especially when you are in the car and you are driving, you are so hungry. You are not sure. Because if you eat it without washing, you get, get in, if there are chemicals involved in the ripening, you might get some of them into your body. But if you go home and wash it properly, and I believe most of the chemicals will have been washed out. One thing about abuse of chemicals, that's why we also spoke issue of weevils in beans. The pesticides that you're supposed to use to kill weevil, you're not supposed to apply it directly on the beans. You're supposed to spray the wet storage place and then put your beans in bag. But I've seen women adding it directly to the beans. The chemicals, the effect may not be immediate. Because when you start consuming it, over time you start developing all kinds of diseases. You find out that recently we hear about all kinds of cancers that were not even existing in Nigeria or in Africa before. We used to hear about people abroad having such diseases, but we have them here. Non-communicable diseases have, have become a major issue in Nigeria. Before, we only have infective diseases like uh, malaria, all kinds of infections, communicable diseases, which is more common in tropical areas like Africa, but 
our health situation has changed. We have people coming up with all kinds of cancers. We have liver failure. We have all kinds of uh, organ diseases that were not uh, common before. It's because of um, a lot of chemicals, toxins have been going into our food, especially those selling palm oil. It's not good for you to add all this colorants and dye into your palm oil to make it more red. Some of these women, they don't even know. That's why education is very, very important. That don't add chemicals or dyes to your oil to make it red. You don't know. It may be somebody that will buy it and cook food. Your child will end up eating that food and you have issues. So some of them, because when we went to the States, some of the women were surprised when we were telling them that they don't even know that it's injurious to their health. So that's why we believe that education is very, very key. When you empower people, they say my people perish because of lack of knowledge. So we try to create, let them know that these things you are doing, it's wrong. It's going to affect not just your health. It can affect the health of you know, generations coming after us, not allowing cassava to ferment very well because of the issue of cyanide. You know, the process of fermentation removes the cyanide. I just want to appeal to them to desist from doing such things because it's deleterious to the health, not just of, um, of the populace. Because let me tell you, uh, there are something we call health indices. You know, in Nigeria, they say life expectancy is so so, maybe 55 years, 60 years. How does it come about? It's because when you have more people die, our health indices drop. So even when we eat right, and we, we protect our health and then leave the rest to God. So I'm appealing to them to desist from such wrong practices because your own children could be affected. One of Fufu, when we got that alert, one of our officers in the states that was mentioned, they did some investigation, they think it's so wrong for you to put chemicals because they said they even put bleach to make the Fufu white. What are you doing? I mean, you're damaging the body. When you put chemical inside your fufu, fufu is traditionally known not to be very white. And even that uh, smell is the, I mean, the good thing. You know that it has one kind of smell that maybe they're trying to now kill the smell so that any people will eat it. But I think it's a very wrong practice and we try to encourage them. Don't even apply chemicals to the food that you consume because chemicals are very dangerous. Another issue also we notice, we, we are trying to talk to the people about is the issue of um, using empty containers of chemicals or containers you have used to store petrol or kerosene. You just wash it and use it to store water or oil. No amount of washing can, can ever remove chemicals when they have leached onto plastics. Because you know some of those plastic containers, I mean the containers for chemicals are usually mostly plastic. And when you store chemical or fuel or kerosene, somehow it gets absorbed on the plastic. So even when you wash it, you can't wash out anything. When you put oil back, the chemicals will leach back into the oil. And you find out that you're eating or, uh, chemicals and you don't know. You think you're drinking water, you think you're taking palm oil, and you don't know that it's already contaminated with chemicals. They are just joining us. It's at Affair on AIT. Next on the program is our nutrition segment. Tiger nuts, also known as earth almonds, were one of the first plants cultivated in Egypt and traditionally used as both food and medicine. Tiger nuts are rich in a variety of nutrients and have been linked to several health benefits. Tiger nuts are rich in antioxidants, which are beneficial compounds that protect your body against aging and diseases like cancer and heart disease. Tiger nuts also promote digestion in various ways. Contents of tiger nuts are as follows. Calories, 103 to 121 grams. Fiber, 2 to 7 grams. Cabs, 9 grams. Protein, 1 gram. Fats, 7 to 9 grams. Vitamin E, 278% of daily value. Iron, 
13 to 40 percent of daily value. Phosphorus, 9 to 11 percent of daily value. Vitamin C, 2 to 8 percent of daily value. Magnesium, 3 to 5 percent of daily value. Zinc, 5 to 7 percent of daily value. Potassium, 3 to 5 percent of daily value. And calcium, 1 percent of daily value. A clinical segment will give you vital tips to stay healthy. Let's go there. Everybody is responsible for his own health. Nobody, it's not somebody else's responsibility. It's yours, first and foremost. And it's in recognition of that that health medication is allowed, but within some constraints. You know, it's just the same thing as saying you have freedom to live your life, but you are not free to kill yourself. So it's the same with self medication is allowed, but we're not allowed you to poison yourself. And that's why, then, the other reason why self-medication is allowed is that there are not enough doctors, there are not enough health professionals, there are not enough pharmacists or nurses to take care of everybody's health at every level. I mean, if we said everybody, before you take a medicine for headache, see a doctor, there'll be a queue. For one week, some people have not seen a doctor anywhere. In not Nigeria alone, no, but it's worse in a country where you have a very, a very low doctor, uh, individual, or pharmacist, individual, or nursing, you know, healthcare per capita is low. So that will even take weeks. And the person may have either been killed by the headache or by the malaria or by the diarrhea or something. So that's why. That's the second reason. And I'll give you the first one as a human right. Number two is to be able to ensure that uh, given the constraints of uh, uh, healthcare personnel, we don't ask people to suffer unduly uh, until they see a medical personnel. And if you see that for products that are allowed for you to use or sell medication, there's always a there's always a, 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 a caveat. It says if you do not get a relief after two days, go and see your doctor. We welcome your contributions on how we can improve the nation's health sector and human lives on our perception segment. The doctors, as far as I'm concerned, um, needs to be paid more adequately. If our politicians sit in the National Assembly and um, State House of Assemblies and they earn fat monies, how much more um, the doctors who uh, cater to the needs of even the people at the grassroots level. And so if we really would uh, want um, some level of improvement and um, not having um, other countries come into the country to take away our doctors. This is where we draw the curtain on the program today. Please kindly support the program by advertising your health products and services at a very subsidized rate. My name is Oshua Mowa Danes. See you same time next week. Please keep staying safe.